Hello and welcome back to the Starseed membership and welcome those of you that are actually watching this video on YouTube because I'm actually uploading it onto YouTube as well, making this public. I want you guys to have a little taste of what the Starseed membership is all about and the type of content or videos that I upload onto the Starseed membership. This is actually the first of its kind in the membership. So this is new content that is coming out starting this Taurus season. As you know, the sun just entered into the sign of Taurus yesterday on the 19th of April. And so for 30 days, the sun transits through the degrees of Taurus. And as it moves through this energy, there's a certain theme that we are tapping into. There's a certain connection. There's a there's a certain energy that we're tapping into. And this is what this video is all about, is what is that energy? What I'm going to do in the video is I'll tell you the ruling energies of this season, the element, the essential oil is one of the things that I'm really excited about bringing into um, this uh, membership is telling you what essential oil is. Uh, important to work with and use during this time and why. And then also the starseed energies, the starseed families that we're going to be connecting with Taurus season. And at the very end, I'm going to do uh, a channeled Akashic message from the starseed family that we're connecting with during the season. So I hope that you enjoy it. And yeah, I'm just going to dive right in. So Taurus season is ruled. There's two planets that Taurus season is actually ruled by. One of them is the earth because Taurus is the earth. It, it is also the earth element. It is fixed earth energy. So it's very, it's dense. It's grounded. It's connected to the essence of who we are as a humanity on this planet. This, this is a big theme about Taurus season. It's really all about the earth Earth Day is during Taurus season. So those kind of things. And then the other planet that rules this energy as well is Venus. And Venus is uh, the goddess of love and beauty. And when we are tapping into that energy, we ourselves are connecting to the theme of relationships. So how we relate to others. Venus is also in our, in our astrological chart represents what we desire in life. Like, what do we really want? It, it also describes like, how are we when we spend money, like things related to money? How do we manifest in life? How much do we value ourselves? And Venus in Taurus rules, she rules this sign. So she feels really strong in this energy. And so in this frequency, this gives us an opportunity when you're following, because part of what we're doing in the Starseed membership is we're following the astrological year. Aries season is the first season. So that was the first energy. And you you experienced in Aries season this intense drive and an activation and an initiation to taking action in your life. But now Taurus has arrived and things generally in Taurus season, they begin to slow down, not necessarily to the point where they stop, but they slow down only because you can't, Aries energy can't go on forever. It is a, a cardinal fire sign. Cardinal meaning it initiates things. Fire meaning um, the, the, the strong um, energy of force. It's like a life force energy. It, 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 it burns through things. It, it like lights things up. And Aries is very much the spark of the year. So the year gets sparked into life. And so in Taurus, it's like, imagine... There was a couple of different images that kept coming up for me in terms of um, what the Aries energy is. It's like the bull, the the in bull riding when they open up the gate and the bull jumps out and then it starts bucking. The moment it jumps out of the gate because it's freed and it wants to get this person off of it, that's Aries energy. But the bull itself also represents the energy of Taurus season. So the bull is very strong and it represents stability. And you have to be careful, like really careful when you're, you can't just get on a bull because it's fun. No. <laughs> so you have to be careful. You have to commit and you have to be steady with the commitment. So 
If things slow down quite a bit, not because they stop, not because the momentum stops, but because, all right, well, now that we've activated something in our lives and we've begun something and we've started something, now we got to keep it going. And it's also the other vision that I just got is a train that starts, uh, you know, that needs, it needs the strength of like a lot of fire, like in the engine um, to start it moving. Well, the energy of Taurus is when it's like autopilot going strong, you know, like that's the feeling that you get with Taurus season. So this is, this is, uh, this is actually a beautiful season and whatever you have begun can now be continued. The other, uh, energy that this rules is the second house. So when you, when you look at your chart, Aries rules, rules the first house, Taurus rules the second house. And it is in this second house where we find our self-esteem, our confidence, our value, um, how we, you know, manifest. But you really have to look at in terms of like the transiting sun and where it is in your chart, which you can look at the video that I did um, on the on the student the member portal about Taurus season because I tell you where this is actually going on in your chart where you're going to feel this you got to look at that house so it generally rules the second house which is a lot of the themes that I've been mentioning but look at where Taurus is in your chart and that will give you even more insight as to what how where you're gonna where you're experiencing this energy of stability and momentum that is sustainable, sustainable energy. So it's a powerful, um, a powerful grounding energy. The other thing I want to share with you is that which system of the body does Taurus rule and, and Taurus rules the muscular system. It makes sense. For example, Aries would be the sprinter, the, the runner that is, does all the sprints right? So it's just sprinting. That's like the main focus. Uh, Taurus would be the runner that runs like marathons. Because when you run a marathon, it's no longer about you only need to do this for 20 seconds and see how fast you can go off, you know, out of the gate. It's you need to know the technique of running. You need to train, <laughs> you know, like you, you, your muscles need to be ready to run for that long or for that distance. You need, like, there's a lot more involved in running a marathon than there is in just sprinting like 20 yards or whatever, however they do it. I've never been a sprinter runner, so I don't really know how they do it, but that's the difference. So the muscular system is what to focus on for this season. And if you have anything going on with your muscular system, that'll tell you, go look in your chart at where, where Taurus is and it's going to highlight issues that you have in that system of the body. And it'll tell you, for example, like say Taurus is in your eighth house and you're having muscular system issues. The sun is transiting, shining a light in that area of your chart meaning if there's an issue in your muscular system, it has to do with eighth house energy, which is what are you not letting go of? What are you holding on to? What are you not releasing that you need to be releasing? It'll, it'll show you what area of your life you need to work on to heal that, that issue with that system of the body. So it's very important. So we're focusing on the muscular system. So exercising is good taking care of, um, you know, finding the strength within your, within your body, but it's, it's the muscular system is like a whole body thing. And if you focus on the whole body and on being strong in the whole body, then you won't leave any, any piece of you out. And it also means that this is, this is us, all of us. It involves the entirety of our body because we have muscles literally everywhere. They cover our entire body. So it's a it's a big deal and it's an important system. And connecting to that, it has to do with the, the feet chakra, the chakra that are found on the feet, which is about grounding. But because there's also a chakra below the feet, which is more that energy of like really, truly grounding to the earth. The feet chakra, think about what the feet do. This is what this Taurus season rules. The feet. Think about the connection between that and the word or the phrase, I move forward. With our feet, we walk. Our feet 
take us forward. Like we walk the earth with our feet and we move forward. I move forward is the mantra of this chakra and this energy. And also um, everything I'm talking about, the second house, all of it. And so your muscular system, if there's something wrong with it, you're not moving forward. Interesting, right? I absolutely love all the connections that come together with with all of this. So we're going to continue on. I'm just going to keep adding more meaning. And this is the video where I just kind of go into the symbolism of all of it. Um, the moon center that this season, that Taurus season is connected to is actually the 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 moon center below the body. So one of the things that you may not know about, uh, because this video is live on YouTube, you may have no idea what are the moon centers. So the moon centers are actually these 13 centers. There's 11 in the body and then there's one above and one below. And it is has to do with the, with the woman's body. It has to do with embracing um our our flow as women we go through these emotional flows just like the moon that's why we call them the moon centers that's why there's 13 so the moon has 13 phases as well so this is all interconnected this is sacred divine feminine energy that is natural to a woman's body and the energy of the divine feminine. So as a woman, we flow through these emotional centers and they last for two and a half days each. And whatever moon center you're in will determine your relationship with the outer world because it tells you where you're at emotionally at that moment. And it you can see whether you're in like the shadow frequency of it or the gift of it, or the exaltation of it. So you're either unbalanced, balanced, or exalted in this energy. So there's a lot of um, insight that you can understand about yourself because in two and a half days, you're going to feel different. The energy is going to shift. This is a huge part of the moon goddess training that we go into. We go into these centers and the goddess and the stone and all of that. But in these videos, I'm going to go into one of them at a time so you can actually understand the, the, the just focus on one. And um, this is the wisdom that will help you to realize as a woman, you're not crazy. You're just a woman and it's beautiful and you flow just like the moon. Every two and a half days, the moon switches signs. Well, every two and a half days, we have our own individual cycle between the moon centers. The one that this Taurus season is going to highlight is the center below the body, the moon center below the body. So this is about the earth, connecting to the earth. This is about our grounding cord into the center of the earth. It has to do with the, the lower dimensions, the first, the second, and the third dimension, according to the Pleiades the Barbara Hanclaw book, which is um, Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. According to her and that book, the Pleiades talk about the dimensions of the earth, how the first dimension is the core of the earth, the second is the plants and the trees, and the third is basically us, like we live in the third dimension. These are the three dimensions, according to the Pleiades, that we are in connection with here, with this moon center and during this time that gets highlighted. But there's also um, a goddess that is also highlighted during this time that can teach us how to move through the energy, how to um, find balance. She's like the example for us to follow. And it's Hathor. And Hathor, for those of you that don't know, um, we talk a lot about Hathor too in the Moon Goddess training. But for those of you that don't know, Hathor is the ancient the one known, at least for the ancient Atlanteans, as the great mother, um, the, great, the great cosmic mother and her face in the ancient Egyptian temples is the one that's looking outward, looking at you. Most faces in Egyptian temples are depicted to the side, like the profile, you see like the side of the face. But Hathor is only one of two deities that are depicted looking straight at you. 
The other one is like a fertility god, something like that. But she is the great cosmic mother and she's also represented as a cow. Cow ears with like this kind of round face looking straight at you, meaning like I created you, I designed you, you come from me. And then where you see her is the Dendera, the temple of Dendera. And in the temple of Dendera, what we learn as in the ancient Atlantean path, initiation path, is the astrology and the connection between us and astrology and also the Merkaba and how our body is literally a Merkaba, sacred geometry, the distortion expression of sacred geometry in this physical time space reality. So these are all things. So she teaches us about connecting to Pachamama, who also represents the great mother, the Milky Way like milk that comes from a cow that comes from the belief that the cosmic mother must be a cow because she gives milk and life and all this stuff. And you know, in India and in, and I think in a a lot other places too, but specifically India, the cow cows are sacred. So you don't mess with the cows. You don't hurt the cows. Like the cows roam free on the streets and stuff like that. So this is, this is the, 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 the belief, it comes from this sacredness of the earth mother, the cosmic mother, Hathor, um, the empress. So if you do tarot, if you know tarot, the empress is a major arcana card. And that's, this is a connection here to the empress. Pachamama, known as you know mother earth to the South American um, the, in Peru, is... The, another way to connect so this is all earth energy like we're all up in this earth energy now the moon centers also help us to um th- the way that we find um balance within this energy before i go into it i do want to tell you about what are the different emotions that it will come up during this time that will be highlighted during this time so notice if you if you um are a woman the that at a certain time during this month, during these 30 days, you are going to feel these kind of emotions. Find the moment where you feel them the strongest and you're going to be, that's going to tell you that you're in this moon center. So for the below the body, if you're unbalanced in this moon center, you're going to feel like you can't feel the ground beneath you. You're going to feel ungrounded in general. You're going to feel disconnected from nature you will feel like you're experiencing low vibration emotions. You won't feel supported. You may also experience grief, like you don't know where it comes from, but there's grief. Um, You could have mother issues going on or coming up for you at this moment. Um, And you can feel also a lack of love and connection. But if you are vibrating at the balance frequency or the gift frequency, you will be enjoying nature. You will feel supported. You will feel a call to connect with nature. Um, Your emotions are going to be in balance. You're going to know your values. You're going to feel financially stable or at least like manifestation is coming to you. You're going to feel secure and you're going to feel abundant. Whether you have money or not, Doesn't the definition of having money is not a part of this. Is You're going to feel the energy, the, the, the emotions of abundance. And if you're exalted in this moon center you're going to you're going to be fully grounded you're going to trust mother earth that mother earth is supporting you you're going to listen to nature you're going to in tuning into animals birds you're going to feel that nature speaking to you you're going to feel the love of the mother you're going to you're going to feel that hathor you know supports you you're going to value yourself fully and you will be manifesting and manifesting will come easy to you during this time if For this month, when this energy comes up for you, these kinds of emotions come up for you, you want to to ground, if you feel ungrounded and you want to ground yourself or in general, if you want to find balance for this month, the stone, the stone that I'm going to recommend is rose quartz. Rose quartz is the stone to work with for this month that connects us with everything that we're talking about. I want to read to you a little bit of the benefits of um, rose quartz. And this is coming from the book of stones, which I know a lot of us have this, but this is where I get all my information about the, the power of crystals. 
The key words of rose quartz are love, gentleness, emotional healing, release of stress, uniting with the divine. It's the element of water and the, the fourth chakra, the heart um, chakra. So the spiritual benefit of rose quartz is that it is one of the most humble yet powerful of the spiritual allies. It turns the heart toward love and bathes the body, mind, and spirit in that healing and enlightening frequency. It carries the loving consciousness of the Christ and other heart-centered spiritual masters. Emotionally, rose quartz is calming for the mind, assisting one in releasing worry, fear, anxiety, and past emotional trauma. It clears the emotional body of ego-driven patterns and can help one feel more open to receiving and sharing love, compassion, and kindness. Physically, rose quartz is a gentle, gentle stabilizing stone to use for physical heart trauma and imbalance. It can help the heart make the shift from stress-based physiology to the higher frequencies of loved love-based physiology. It is ideal for premature babies and young children with heart weaknesses or disease, but can be used by anyone who needs a stronger, more stable heart. The affirmation to say with this stone is, I open my heart to receive and express the energy of love. And the reason I chose rose quartz is because of the energy of Hathor, which leads us into another amazing tool to use during this month, which is um, the essential oil of the month that I chose. So the essential oil that I chose for us is um, vetiver. This is the the best brand um, that you can get, doTERRA. I'm going to be running a cleanse in May 30th. So this is your chance to jump on the on board with working with these powerful essential oils. But this month, you want to work with vetiver. Vetiver is actually has this like thickness to it. It has such a powerful grounding. Like just sniffing it right now. If you're sensitive, you're going to feel what I'm feeling. It's this, it's both expanding and grounding at the same time. Such a powerful energy. But I want to tell you in more detail why, why um, vetiver. So vetiver is centering. It's about centering and descent. Vetiver oil assists in becoming more rooted in life. Hence why we're using it for tourist season. Life can scatter one's energy and make individuals feel split between different priorities, people, and activities. Vetiver brings the individual back down to earth. It assists in grounding to the physical world. Vetiver also assists individuals in deeply connecting with what they think and feel. In this way, vetiver is incredibly supportive in all kinds of self-awareness work. It helps uncover the root of an emotional issue. Vetiver challenges the need to escape pain. It centers individuals in their true self and guides them downward to the root of their emotional issues. It helps them find relief, but not through avoidance. Relief comes after they have traveled within and met the core of their emotional issue. Vetiver will not let them quit. It grounds you in the present moment and carries you through an emotional catharsis. The descent into the true self assists individuals into discovering deeper facets of their being. Vetiver opens the doors to light and recovery through this downward journey, literally rooting you down. To use vetiver, you can use it as aromatherapy, you can smell it like I just did. You can put um, a few drops into a diffuser and um, diffuse it in the room and it'll be like an amazing smell. You can also place a couple of drops in um, on your hands. I actually, I, I, I like doing it on the wrist. And then once you have like a drop there and it's thick, so this one kind of takes a 
a minute to come out. <laughs> but once it does, it comes out a lot. I rub the hands, the wrists together, and then you can smell it. And this is, you know, you can also put, you know, like rub a, a little bit behind the ears. I like doing that as well. And the smell will surround you like if you're putting on a perfume. Like literally you can do that with essential oils. That's to use it um, uh, aromatically. Topically, you can put one to three drops on the bottoms of your feet or on the base of your spine. And if you're if you're if you're sensitive, like you have skin sensitivity, put another base oil, mix it with it um, before you put it on your body. But I don't see having issues with this specific oil. There are some oils that can like be strong, like have a kind of a burning sensation if you put too much on. This one, I don't believe it's like that. But apply one to three drops on the bottom of the feet or on the base of the spine for the topical use. And you can actually take this internally because this is an essential oil supplement. Insane, right? The doTERRA brand. Only the doTERRA brand. Do not just go buy any vetiver and take it internally. Please, no. You need to get the doTERRA brand vetiver. Like very specific if you're going to use this internally. Uh, so you take one to two drops under the tongue or you put it in a capsule or you can put it in water. I recommend the capsule thing <laughs> because tasting oils can be an experience. And unless you're like down for that, <laughs> putting it in the capsule. I do every morning. I don't do vetiver every day, but I do other oils every day and I just put them in the capsule and then take them and it's like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So the power of vetiver this month to help guide you through all of vetiver and rose quartz this month to help guide you through this beautiful energy. I already feel better just smelling the oil, putting it on me. It's just amazing. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the starseed family energy. And what we are going to be, the starseed energy that we're going to be connecting with for the month of Taurus season is um, really strongly um, the Pleiades. So continuing on with the essential oil energy, I have an oil available on my Etsy store that is the Pleiades starseed oil. I have it in a roller form and I also have it in a, a spray bottle in a mist. This use the same way you just rub it on the wrists and you can put it behind the ears as well. <laughs> I love using oils and I mix and match all kinds of oils. But because this is a month where we are very powerfully connecting to the Pleiades, I want to let you know that this is available on my Etsy store and you can get it and use it for this month and every time you want to connect with this energy. The other oils that are in this Pleiades blend, because it's not just... Um, it's not just one oil. It actually has uh, ylang ylang, bergamot, davana, and jasmine oils. Coconut oil is the base, and then mica powder because of the obviously the star energy, the star shimmering star energy. So you can use that oil as well. Is another recommendation. Um, so the Pleiades is the, one of the families that we're connecting to. The Hawthors is the other one. The Venusian starseeds is the other one. And then also Algol, which is a fixed star that connects us to, uh, the, the darkness. There's no other way to describe it, but it's d digging into the, going in the deep and, and shining a light into the dark. So that's the one uncomfortable energy. However, so many magical things can happen from that. And it is really the triple goddess. It's really the, the trinity. It's really like the, through the darkness, you get to the light and you find, you know, your, your expansion, your reason, your understanding, deeper understanding. So the other one is the, the energy of ancient Lemuria. So if you've had it past lives in ancient Lemuria or you have Lemurian starseed markings in your chart, which if you want to know what your starseed markings are, um, book a starseed reading, starseed ancestry reading with me. Link is below in the description. Or you can go to my website, channelforgrace.com 
guru and book a reading. So a lot of you have gotten starseed readings from me already. But so Algol, the Pleiades, the Hawthors, the Venusian starseeds, and Lemuria, ancient civilization of Lemuria. All of these, the Pleiades connect us to the light. So this is a month to, to enjoy life. This is a month to enjoy being here in this third dimension. Everything that you can touch, feel, this is all about the senses. Touch, feel, smell, see, enjoy. That's what the Pleiades teach us. Pleasure. Enjoy being pleasure. And the oils and all and the and the crystals are all gonna help you with all of this, connecting at this uh, deep level. The Hawthors are about using your voice, singing, um, speaking truth into into the universe. So singing is another thing that you want to do a lot of this month. The Venusian star seeds, it's like the heart connection. Hawthors and Venusian star seeds connect to your heart, open up the heart. That's why we're using rose quartz. And ancient Lemuria was um, where it was a very intuitive place. So a light, very high frequency, um, intuition, and it 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 reminds us to listen to our intuition and to raise our vibration so that we can see and feel and experience everything at this higher frequency. And then algal, the energy of algal helps us to look into the the dark so that we can find our essence, our little octahedron inside and um, the essence of our being and find that, that the inner light. So isn't that freaking fun? to know all of that. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a video that I put up every month now. This is the very first one and you guys get it for free. But if you want to keep watching content like this and more, then definitely join the Starseed membership. But we are not done here, ladies and gentlemen, because the last part of this video is the uh, channeled Akashic message from the starseed families that we are connecting, the Pleiades, Algol, the Hawthors, Venusian starseeds, and um, Lemuria, ancient Lemuria. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Akashic Records, and I am going to um, channel a message from the star families. I'm really excited. So if you've never observed a Akashic reading, um, have fun, enjoy. There's really nothing to do other than just just be in your in your space. Just listen. Um, I'll have some music for next time around, but for today, because I first time doing this, I'm not like prepared for that kind of thing. But I will have music for the the future videos that I'm going to be doing. So um, close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths. In and out. I'm going to open up the records and we'll see what comes through. Sat now. From the deep depths of the cosmic mind, I hear a whisper. The whisper calls us inward, towards our essence. A light begins to glimmer at the center of our heart. This is the light of unity, the all-knowing wisdom of the One. Through this door, we open the gates of the Akashic, the magical flower of life. We see our duality. We recognize our sacred trinity. We begin to witness infinite possibilities as we become the observer and the observed. A powerful and luminescent light engulfs our being and we feel many dimensions all at once. We enter the Akashic records, protected and loved by all star beings that have access these portals before. The records are now open. May wisdom flow, may understanding descend, and may we be blessed with the light of love.
to come through. Feel the power of the moon. Feel the power of the night sky to awaken in you the power to transform and transmute. This month is like a cleansing, a gentle cleansing that will free you of anything that burdens you. Use the strength power that you have to connect the dots like a spider that weaves the web. Use your voice, your words, your intention to begin to weave this beautiful web of your life. What are you manifesting at this moment? The more you connect the dots, the more the synchronicities will start to arrive in your life. Be the spider. Be like the cosmic mother. Be like the power that you have to find the connection. You are a magical being, just like a unicorn. A being that exists because you believe in the magic that it holds. You are a magical being that can create and manifest anything you want in your life. Don't hide in the shadows. Shine a light through the shadow. Your intuition will guide your way. Your eyes will open in the darkness of the night. You will see the things that disturb you. You will see the things that cause you pain. But you will see these things with wisdom and you will understand the power that you have to transform and transmute. This is a time to let go, to release, to get rid of anything that does not serve you. This is a time to sing your song, to speak your truth. You must let go you must release, you must open your eyes, face those things that no longer serve you. And once you do, your throat will open up and you will be able to sing your beautiful song. You will find your grace. You will feel the magic that lives within you at the center of your heart, at the center of your space. You will feel this light wanting to shine brighter and brighter and you will find those that want to connect with you on this beautiful journey. Find the gratitude. Find the grace. Say a prayer that the abundance will come to you because this abundance is coming and you will manifest it. Feel the power that comes from connecting to the challenging things in your life, to accepting them and to letting them flow. 
Feel the power that you have, the determination to make anything happen. Feel your strength from within. Your strength will guide you through the shadows. Trust the sacred mother. Trust the sacred divine energy. And the power of the masculine will support you. You are the butterfly. You are transforming. You are the prophet. You are the truth bringer. You are the awakening one, the high priestess, the oracle, the one with the magic to change everything. Listen to this self. Listen to the teacher that lives within. She will guide you. Sing your song and sing it freely. You are the teacher. You are the teacher. From the deep depths of our soul, we give gratitude and love. For we understand we are a fractal of that cosmic whole. As we give, so we get, open to all possibilities through time and space. We walk through the Akashic portal back to our inner space, remembering that this wisdom lives within every cell of our being. Thank you, star beings, for holding this sacred space and for protecting us during this journey through time and space. The records are now closed. And with that, I will leave you to go on your magical journey through Taurus season. Thank you so much for being here. If you have not yet, sign up for the Starseed membership and you will receive this video every month as, as well as much, much more. Satnam and I'll see you again next time.